Okay, everyone, this is going to be part four of the Arduino turntable build. Um, in this video, I'll kind of talk about what's changed since the last update and uh, what's still left to do. So first thing I really want to talk about is the turntable itself. So this white turntable is actually completely 3D printed. Um, I did not do this design. This design was made by someone and uploaded onto Thingiverse, and I was able to find it and print it. Um, the turntable works fantastically well with the controller I made. Um, it works with a little 5 volt 4 wire stepper motor um, and it has a, a good gear reduction ratio so it's it's very accurate. Um, I will leave a link to the, the location of this Thingiverse file at the bottom of the video if you want to take a look at it. But um, yeah, fantastic design that I did not come up with but it works well with this uh, controller that I made. Um, also in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the new controller. I've touched on it briefly in my previous video, but now I'll get you a little bit more insight into how it works. I will also tell you about um, the other controller associated with this project. So while this controller has all the input output devices, um, there is another controller basically underneath the turntable that uh, does some of the other functions. So, uh, without further ado, let's take a look underneath the turntable and show you the other controller I was just talking about. Okay, now we are underneath the train layout, and uh, up until now, the only part of the controller you've seen is basically the user interface device, and that device, again, has the microcontroller in it and all of the buttons and knobs that you use to control the turntable, and the CAT6 cable from that unit comes down here and plugs in to this location. In here you've got a CAT6 breakout board and this sends the stepper motor signals to the stepper motor driver which is located here. These are the two relays used in the auto reverser and uh, that's what's down here. These are just uh, spring loaded speaker wire connectors and this has the control transformer coming in for the train and then this goes from this location to the turntable itself. Um, and then lastly over here we have power coming in and hitting a 5 volt buck converter and then going back out to the uh, control that you've seen so far. And then over here we have our wires going to our Hall effect sensor on the bottom of the turntable which is used to set the, the zero location whenever you're using the turntable in auto mode. Before we go into showing you how the, the turntable now works, I really wanted to go over the controller again because there's been some major improvements uh, to this controller. And all of it has been for user ease of use, I guess is the best way to put it. And I've tried to automate as much as possible um, so that someone could just download this code, build the controller, and then hopefully not actually have to tinker inside the code itself. Everything should be adjustable on the controller. Well, this potentiometer here, um, this moves the turntable clockwise or counterclockwise, which is pretty straightforward. And you can see whenever you move the turntable, the screen kind of tells you what you're doing. So it tells me, well, look, you're moving the turntable. Perfect. Now, this potentiometer right here controls the rate of that movement. So all the way to the left, that's your step speed. So it moves at one step at a time. You move it in the middle. That's your jog speed. So that's kind of a little bit faster than step speed, but not as fast as travel speed. And that's good for whenever you're making minor adjustments in the turntable position. And all the way over here would be what I call run speed or travel speed. And that's how fast the turntable moves whenever it's running automatically or in auto mode. Um, these two potentiometers here, I'm not going to turn them around, but these are actually adjusting the jog speed and travel speed respectively. So if your jog speed's too slow, you can adjust it real time with this poten potentiometer. And same thing with travel speed. You can adjust your travel speed real time with this potentiometer without having to go into the program. The next big feature here is the 4x4 keypad. Um, this is super useful because it eliminates a ton of wiring. Um, so before each one of these buttons for example would have had to been its own wire to the Arduino Mega but now since I've used this 4x4 keypad matrix I can use an Arduino Nano. Um, a lot less wiring is required. And then the last thing as you can see here is the LCD which I've talked about before. Um, a little bit of information about what this LCD shows us. So right here, this steps per revolution, and this tells you how many steps of the stepper motor it takes to turn one revolution of the turntable, which is important. 
this POS, despite what you might be thinking, that means position. Um, and this means that the turntable is currently in position 5,362 of the total steps in the turntable. So that tells you exactly where the turntable's at in the code. Uh, DB stands for dead band. So since this design uses a Hall effect sensor as a limit switch, there's a number of steps that the turntable moves that that Hall effect sensor is active. And I call that the dead band. So this tells me that the dead band for this design is 137. That means 137 steps out of the basically 27,000 you can't program in, and it takes that into account. Um, over here, you can see it says head. That means if you move anything in automatic mode, it'll move the head to wherever you tell it to move. You can change that by pressing the D, and then it says tail. So now if you press any of these buttons, it'll automatically move the tail position to the indicated location. Um, here, this, you might be able to hear in the background, this it switches the polarity of the turntable. Now this happens automatically in the software. It automatically does it, but if for some reason you wire, I don't know, your roundhouse wrong. So for example, if you've got the polarity switched on a couple of the, the lines, or if you're using this controller in manual mode, you can switch that just by pressing a button. Um, also, this has the zero button works as the program button, so you can still program this controller on the fly like the other ones. You hit the zero button, it means you're in program mode, and then if you hit any one of these other buttons, you program that position. Just like a car stereo, you can program any position to be saved. It doesn't have to be on a certain index position. Um, and then the star button changes it between automatic and manual. So right now you're in manual mode, so none of these buttons, if you press them, will move the, the turntable. Manual mode, again, is really good for people who don't really want to use this controller to have automatic functions, um, just want to use it to move clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, or if you're troubleshooting something, manual mode works really well. And then you can switch it back to automatic mode anytime you want. So that tells you what mode you're in. Uh, the next big benefit of this is I've added a whole bunch of menus. So A and C move the cursor up and down or left and right, and B selects. So right now you can see my cur cursor is on menu. I hit menu. And the overview screen is the screen we were just at. We've got a calibrations menu, a view save tracks position, and a save tracks to EEPROM. So once you've programmed all of your tracks wherever you want them to be and you want to save them permanently to the microcontroller, you just hit B and it'll save all of the tracks to EEPROM and it'll kind of give you a, a little splash screen, I'll show you. So you can see it's saving to the EEPROM. Once it's complete, it tells you and it goes back here. So that means that all of the positions I programmed to this controller are now saved. I can power it off, I can unplug it, I can do whatever I want, plug it back in and it'll know everything that I've already programmed. Um, view save tracks so for example you program all your tracks sometimes it's really nice to know what those program positions are whenever you're troubleshooting so you can go here and you can actually scroll scroll through so I know that program position one the head position is at step position 26,354 while the tail position for that button is 12,809 so it tells you where all those are, and you can scroll through them. Um, very useful, again, for troubleshooting. Um, the calibrations menu is probably the most powerful thing that I've added to this controller. What this allows you to do is, first off, this calibrate steps per revolution. You can hit this button, and the turntable will automatically count up how many steps it takes to do one full revolution of your turntable. You don't have to do any math. You don't have to get in the program and enter it. It automatically calculates it, and then it saves it into your EEPROM for you, so you don't even have to worry about it. That's probably one of the best things I've added. <clears throat> the next one um, is calibrating gear slop. I call it gear slop. It's backlash, right? So if you have any backlash in your gears, um, this takes that into account and helps negate it whenever it's moving in automatic mode. And you can calibrate the magnetic dead band, again, there's a Hall effect sensor in there, and that Hall effect sensor isn't the most precise piece of measurement equipment, um, so this helps you uh, negate any of that unknown using this right here. So again, all three of these 
calibrations can be done without ever having to get inside the program and it saves it into the controller so you, once you do it and as long as you don't mess with the turntable you won't have to do it again um, again keeping people from having to go into the program and manually enter information which is really not fun for anyone okay everyone now that I've showed you uh, the controller itself I've talked to you about the new 3d printed turntable and I've showed you uh, what's underneath the layout I kind of want to show you this in action because that's really where the fun's at. So whenever you first take the controller and you turn it on, you get this splash screen and then the controller starts automatically homing the turntable. And what that does is it makes the magnet underneath the, the turntable line up with the Hall Effect sensor so that the turntable knows where it's at. Until that point, the turntable has no clue where it's at. Now let's say you don't want to use the automatic functions of this turntable and you don't want to install a Hall Effect sensor and a magnet, you can just press this button right here and it changes it to manual mode. So you can just move the controller or the turntable however you want using the knobs on the controller and you don't have to worry about installing the Hall Effect sensor or the magnet. All you need is the stepper motor and it'll work fine. Um, while that's very cool and it's really good for troubleshooting as well, uh, the real beauty of this is an automatic mode. So let's switch it back to automatic mode and it'll finish its homing sequence. So whenever these two pieces of blue tape line up, that means it's, it's home. So now that it's in its home position, you can see that the position is zero. So uh, let's make the tail of the turntable go to stall one. So we switch it to say tail, stall one is position two. It says auto move. And I apologize in advance, my track work here is not finalized. This is for testing, so it is shaky and bumpy as heck. Like a glove. All right. Now let's get out the smaller locomotive. So let's say we want the tail to go to stall three, which is position four. It says auto move. Perfect, and it lines up. Perfect. Now let's say we want this to do a complete 180. We want the head to then go to stall one, or stall three, I'm sorry, which is position four. And while this turns, I'll kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on underneath. So the track on the turntable is powered from a slip ring, which means that uh, it can do complete 360s. I mean, you can turn this thing one direction indefinitely and it'll always have power because of the slip ring. Um, also, what that allows us to do is keep the train powered at all times. So if you have a DCC locomotive, your train would have power on it all the time while it's turning, it wouldn't shut off. Now, hold on. I don't know if you heard it, but there's a little click. That's the auto reverser flipping. So what that does is now the polarity of the track is lined up with the stall. So you don't have a short circuit when you bring the train in and out. Perfect. Let's say we want the head to go to stall two, which is position three. What's really good about this turntable controller is it knows the position of the turntable and where it needs to go, and it can determine if it's faster to move there clockwise or counterclockwise. So you'll see here, the turntable is now gonna move clockwise to get to the desired location. Lines up quite well. Now let's say we want to program a new position. Um, let's say we want the tail of the turntable to go to that scab track over there on the left. So we hit tail and we move the train to that position. So we move it using these uh, knobs. Shot a little bit past it. Let's move it back. And it's really important to get it really dead on. All right, there we go. I think that's lined up, let's check. And again, this is just a scab piece of track on the side, held on with painter's tape, so there's no power, I can't go super far out. But as you can see, it's lined up. To 
program that. Let's say we want it to be on position eight. You hit the program button, eight, program complete. So we can move the turntable. Hit position eight. Oops, sorry, ran past it. Position eight, there we go. And it lines up. So yeah, uh, the real beauty of this controller um, is that you can program one track and not delete the programs of the others. So for example, I just program position eight. I don't have to reprogram all of the other track positions I've already touched. It's, it stays, you don't have to reprogram every, every time. Uh, the other beautiful thing about this controller, as I stated earlier, is you can save all of your save track positions to EEPROM. So if you power it off and power it back on, it knows where everything's at. You don't have to reprogram it every time you turn it on and off. So I think that's a pretty good overview of where the project's at at this point. Um, I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions and requests for the code. Unfortunately, the code's just not ready. And the reason the code's not ready is because um, the, the microcontroller I'm using to run this code is maxed out. The, the Arduino micro that I'm using or actually, I think it's an Arduino Nano. The Arduino Nano I'm using um, has storage capacity and it has RAM capacity. And the storage on the Arduino Nano is at 90% and the RAM usage is over 80, which causes instability issues. Um, I've seen some issues with uh, corrupted text on the LCD and I've seen some issues where the controller just crashes. Um, and I believe that's just up to the fact that the microcontroller's out of RAM. So I still need to do some optimization of the code, but in general, it's, it's really close to being finished and I'm very excited because this has been a multiple year project. I know there is a core group of people who are really following this project and I wanna thank you all very much. Uh, I love hearing the stories about how you guys are building your own controllers or how you built your own turntable and how it's all working. So thank you all very much for the comments and, and uh, the messages, it's really cool to hear. So in closing, thank you all very much for watching. I uh, hope you have a great day.